So, I was in the bath the other night, counting my toes again, because you can never be too sure. And I realized that I was probably going to need a new daily driver. And I got to thinking about how do you actually go about buying a car these days? Now, I could do what the vast majority of people do, and everyone around me at the moment is obviously seems to be doing. And as you stick your thousand down and you pay your 400 pound a month to uh, rent a car that is never yours and that you give back at the end of the period, because most people don't want the responsibility of, you know, I'll be honest with you, the peace of mind that you're supposed to get from that didn't really always panned out because I've tried it in the past and yeah, I'm not going there again. What did I actually do? Well, I thought I'd go old school on it. And I thought I'd give a budget option a go. See what we could get for £1,000. Now, £1,000 in my head isn't a budget, you know, that's not a budget car. A budget car in my head is something that's under 500 quid, but you can't even buy scrap for under 500 quid these days. So what we used to do is you used to get the yellow paper or the yellow rag, and you'd buy that on a Wednesday morning petrol station it's a big pile of them on the floor and you'd pick one up on the way to work you'd get into work and you'd sit on the throne for half an hour circling the ones you wanted to look at and then after you'd finished there you'd give them a ring and you'd get a couple of bits and people had integrity back in those days so they would you know You'd make a few phone calls, you'd go and see a car, and everything would be great and fantastic. The scam, they were there, but it wasn't like it is today. Today, oh my word. Because everything is now done semi-anonymously on the, the, the face space and the egg bay and the uh, uh, um, uh, the gumshoe, and what's that other one? The auto fader. Now, I know auto fader used to be a magazine, but oof. yeah. There's no integrity left in it anymore, so a lot of these adverts are scams. I mean, the same car sold by four different people, four different prices. Yeah, um, cars that have been well looked after, no issues, etc., etc., in use daily, and the side of it's caved in, or there's a massive wet stain under the front of it, or my favourite red flag is car has been reliable i use it every day and yet both of the towing eye covers are missing out of the bumper yeah so i went through the process and i did a couple of weeks did my time found out the lie of the land and figured out what was going on with things um came up with a few candidates a few you know and uh i, I made a few arrangements to go and see a few cars and inevitably, the day that I went to do that, um, I had, oh, can't make it, or oh, can't do it, or oh, car's sold, or oh, car's faulty, or oh, can't get old. Now, out of all of those cars, I think I must have gone and tried to view seven different cars. And I, I managed to actually end up seeing one out of seven because, like I said, no integrity. We managed to get to see a car. And... I was sat there thinking, oh, it's just, you know, it, it, it's not a bad motor, to be honest with you. It looks straight. It uh, kind of drove straight. Ish, you know, I was, uh, I, I did have a few concerns, but I thought, no, it's not, yeah. So I did the deal with the guy. Now, I have to tell you, I did spend a little more than a thousand pounds because a thousand pound gets you something that is either broken or significantly damaged in some way or my favorite no mot and that wasn't what we were going for so yeah we had to spend a little bit more and i ended up spending 1100 pounds but i i did get a car that was all right it's it's perfectly you know and the guy assured me he'd been using it every day to go back and forth to work it, it had quite a bit of mot on it 10 months to be precise and what i ended up with was this and we'll have a look at it in a second because needless to say what i got wasn't exactly what was advertised as you know it was always a few caveats and i accept that you buy a second-hand car for 
well, I was going to say less than a thousand pound. It was slightly more than a thousand pound. But you buy a car for that type of money, you're going to have a few little, you know. But uh, it, I think this one had a few more little things. I'm actually not disappointed in 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 what 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 has occurred here. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the car. We're going to do the work that we need to do on it. We're going to see how much all that costs and how close to, well, I was going to say a thousand pound, but it's no longer a thousand pound. So we're going to figure out what it costs to actually put a car or have a car on the road with a decent amount of MOT that you can use on a day-to-day -day basis safely and economically. That's pretty important because you need to see what, uh, I think that people need to understand what you can get for the money and what actually, you know, you need to do to actually make it all uh, make it all okay. What have we ended up with? Well, I, I'm we're in the old Empire of Dirt, yeah, you know, and that's what we've got. It's a 2008 Citroen C5, two liter HDI, that type of thing, you know, nothing special. Uh, same engine as used in the Mondaino and the 407 and the, all those other things, you know, like the uh, the V50 S40, that that engine, this, you know, and it's a good engine, you know. I I've had a 407 before, I've had, you know, and it, it's a. But it, the the main thing about this thing is the bodywork on it. Oh my God, I, I there's hardly a mark on it, and this car's a 2008, by the way, you know. The wheels are not even... <laughs> now, it's not all roses, right? Because for this money, you can't expect a lot. And I, 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 I have high expectations of anything, you know? But I, I, you can't expect a lot. And there are a few little issues, you know? Um, as an example, when I was just about to drive away, the guy who bought it off said, oh, by the way, I noticed there was a set of anti-roll bar bushes in the glove box. Don't know what they're for. Probably the anti-roll bar. You might want to look into that. I heard the snap! So, yeah, um, there, there might be a little bit of remedial bush work to do. <laughs> you know, and I'm fully expecting it to be some sort of oil leak, given that I know this engine. Um, be a little bit interesting the, the synchro on fourth is a bit interesting as well but again we're gonna and there's a few knocks noises and one thing or another what have you but it, it's got 10 months mot you know a 10 months mot i'll just leave that there because like i said this thing is is almost honestly inside it's like I, I i can't even begin to you know i it's like new honest to god it's like it's never been driven if it wasn't for the fact that the the the, the stereo's got warm buttons on it, you wouldn't. But everything else is is mint. It's like I don't even think the back has ever been in. Ah, it's dark. Anyway, um, so yeah, I mean, look at the wheels. Unless they've been refurbed, I'm blown away. And somebody has already thrown the locking wheel nuts in the sea. How cool is that? It's good to see that the message is getting out there. Yeah, all right. Well, that stick. What's this bonnet made out of? Oh my God, is the bonnet aluminium? No way! Uh, oil filter is just down there, so that shouldn't be a problem. Um, and we do have to do a service on it. The belt is a little bit on the noisy side, but looking at the state of it, it appears to be okay. Uh, the under tray is still there. <laughs> Coolant levels all check out. Power steering fluid all good. Everything else is all good. Headlamps. Well, you wouldn't have any trouble changing a bulb in these, would you? So, yeah. Um, it does have an interesting wiper system. Obviously, being a Citroen, something would have to be, uh, you know. Uh, they've got individual motors. Look at all that space in there fit a dead badger in it. You can see that the previous guy or the, the person or what have you 
did throw a damp rag over it, you know, in other words, gave it a number one in a car wash. What the bloody hell is that thing? It looks like it's come off the frigging space shuttle. What? It's aluminium. Oh, well, I, I suppose we're lucky in a way that this hasn't got the fancy electros... <laughs> um, can you say that? No. Probably not. Um, the electro, uh, gas, hydro, pneumatic, floaty thing. So, yeah. I don't, we look, you know, we're looking all right, yeah? Um, well, I see we're looking all right. That's got a bigger lip than a chav. This is absolutely full. Absolutely full of it. And all we got here. Panos! Drive with all technology. Outside. x pizza Wow! God, that's uh, something else that is. What have we got on the back? Salem! No, 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 no. Atrizon Zizzard! That sounds, you know. Um, they are, yeah. But I've seen a lot worse, you know. And, uh, let's have a look here. Oh, cable ties! Yay! Well, at least they're still on there, you know. I'm not sure what that is there. Or what's leaking there. Uh, possibly a sump gasket. Which isn't too much of an issue, but it is leaking quite a bit. Uh, 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 uh. Or is it that? Austin's flexi looking like flexi's okay. Oh, Christ! Bruff! <coughs> Jesus wept! Oh! Christ almighty! Wow! <laughs> now I can tell that somebody's done a bit of work on it. How about this shirt? How about this bottom one, yeah. Right. Oh. Hey! There we go! There's your problem! Yeah, we'll team like that. So, yeah. Well, it could be worse. Uh, uh, <laughs> go wrong with them. <laughs> well, I don't see any movement there. Although, I think it's going to be a case of... Nah, nah, there's nothing wrong with these. Not there. Problems are bottom joint. Uh, that one doesn't look too clever. But there you go. Ah, he's fine. However, how are we looking with this one? Uh, this one's all right. Huh. What do you know? I reckon the other guy knew about it before. Mm. Oh, God, it's like new. Yeah, I reckon. Some gasket. I reckon as well that we should be changing the gearbox oil in it. Sooner rather than later, wherever that comes out. I'm hoping it's that thing over there. Well, there's no rest in it, I'll give it that. Now, we did have a bit of noise back here. So, oh my Christ, more space age bloody. The bloody hell is this? Good God.
What a bloody complicated bloody... Right, so what I'm taking from this is this side is a bit better than the other side. Now that there, I don't even know where that is. What the hell is that? Oh, okay, it's one of them. Uh, it's like some sort of spoon. Oh, okay. Those pads are a joke. Um, these discs are... Um, uh, new. Those pads end though. Maybe he's taking a piss with her. I hate that. Right. I reckon this thing here, these things, I, I got no reference point, I gotta be honest with you. I don't. That to me looks a bit janky. It looks to me. Like the whole arm's gonna have to be replaced anyway. So we need one of them arms, two of them arms. What the bloody hell are these things? I've never seen these. Not that that means anything, but. Some good news and some bad news. Uh, I suppose the good news is, is that it's not rusty. It does seem straight, it's not been an accident. The front and the tray's held on with Cable ties, you know, standard. Um, probably be put back on with cable ties as well when I have it all off. The sump gasket, I'm hoping it's the sump gasket. I have a feeling these have got a reputation for a bit of an oil leak, but I can't remember where it was. Um, I'll have to do some research. I'm hoping it's the sump gasket because that might not be too difficult. Um, it might literally actually just be... <coughs> the anti-roll bar bushes, despite having new ones there, there's nothing wrong, I can find nothing wrong with those. Somebody's replaced the track, uh, track uh, uh, drop link on one side. Who does that? Stop it! So I've got to get one for that side. I might just do both again because, you know, there was a bush on the bottom of there that I've got uh, um, uh, uh, offside, near side, near side. Uh, the actual bottom link, whether it's part of the whole assembly, no, in my luck, it probably is. How you actually do it with it on the car. Um, I'm sure somebody's done it. I'll have a look. But that's what's knocking down there. It's not an anti low bar link bushes. Can't be as simple as that, can it? And it needs two control arm thingies at the back. Everything else, though, seems to be fine. Um, will I be doing the work on it? Yeah, I'll be doing the work on it. I wouldn't sit in it straight knowing shit was wrong with it, you know? <coughs> so, yeah. Um, will that get in the way of other stuff? Don't know. Depends how much we can get done this week, doesn't it? Let's have a crack. Well, I say have a crack. I'm going home now. We've got to get the parts fairies to sort a few bits and pieces out, haven't we? Round two. I had to have a chat with the parts fairies because uh, this one's going to need a bit of work. If I am not mistaken, I can hear... Oh, yeah. Yeah, there they are. That is... Yeah, okay, hang on a minute. Let me just assume the position. <laughs> well, it's... Uh, it's all in here. Um, oh, we've got absolutely everything from filters to sensors to belts. I mean, right. I'm not going to fluff around all this. I'm going to get stuff done. Uh, because I've got a certain amount of time um, and uh, there's a, one of the biggest jobs that we've got to do on it uh, there's front and back um, but I'm going to start at the front I, I've actually got to change the wheel bearing because yes it's rumbling but there's an intermittent ABS fault on it 
uh, which doesn't obviously always come up. But what it's doing is it's uh, when you go into reverse and you are turning, it does it. Um, it's either the sensor or the wheel bearing because the ring is in the wheel bearing. So you have to do both really, don't you? And the wheel bearing's noisy in it anyway, so. But that does mean you've got to take the whole hub off. Yeah. It's a good thing we've got to press. Anyway, I'm going to get shit done. Let's have a crack. Are they? Oh, they're hex bolts. Jesus wept. So, a bit of a schoolboy area. Ah, unfortunately, um, despite knowing better, I dis disconnected everything without taking this off first. And of course, this is a stupid size socket. Now, I'm not a massive fan of doing this because you can <laughs> and do bend the wheel bolts. Um, I've got spares, uh, but I don't really see that I have any choice at the moment. I haven't used the power arm this much in months, years even. <sighs> right. <sighs> and there you go. And hopefully, we haven't bent anything. Sketchy as... <sighs> but there you go. And that's what you get for not thinking ahead. Because the battery ran out in the GoPro, it's always something, isn't it? You didn't see the uh, epic struggle we had to get this to this state. I don't actually know, I don't even know if you saw me taking it off the car, because that was epic as well. Um, so, what I've got to do now is another epic thing. I've got to hope that there's enough length in this, otherwise... Oh, oh man, I've got to... Yeah, it just takes time, this. Now, the uh, oh, inner race is there, and there is no easy way of getting these off here. There just isn't. Um, I usually end up cutting them off and not worrying about the state of the hub after. There you are. It's moving. It's moving. It's moving. Now, hopefully, I'm not getting this other piece stuck in here, because that would... No, 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 we're good, we're good, we're good. Um, ooh, now, that's uh, reached a point, and the point is, <coughs> I don't know if this is moving or not. Feels like it is. What a f shit. Oh! How much damage did we do to the actual hub? Not a massive amount. Nothing is gonna... Nothing is gonna cause a problem. Hopefully we've got enough travel on the ram, otherwise I'm going to look a bit daft. Oh, 
full. That's too big. See, my, my, my concern here is the fact that it's over the lip and he's going to wear the ring out. Um, it doesn't directly contact with the ring, but it's going to cause dirt is going to get in there and it's going to that's what's going to happen it's going to it's going to wear the ring out um not immediately but see the difference so what i'm going to do is i'm going to stick the old one back in because you know and this is the curse of aftermarket parts There you go. Considering the price of this stuff, this little squirty bottle's bloody useless. This doesn't need a lot of force, it doesn't need it will just it should just go home. alone for a minute these bushes here have got to come out and there's only one way they can go out because they've got a flange on them so I've got to clear this here so I can get but I found oh, that little nut there is going to cause a problem hey, what I'd have done is put that over there threaded bar pull it out that way but that there is a problem. Oh, actually, I think I know exactly what to use. So. Expecting this to be easy? I was expecting a little more compliance. Can you see it? Wow. See a line of corrosion around there? Palava. What a palava. Back and forth. <laughs> uh, I'll be honest with you, I definitely think it's the easiest way. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, fine. Fantastic design we got going on here. Yeah? Got a bit of a lip on it, that has. Uh, yeah, fantastic bit of design we've got going on here because that is the bottom shock bolt. Ta da! How do you fix that? You don't. Right, how much of a difference is it? Twenty five versus two mil. Millie the side. That's wrong. That's actually wrong. Wrong part. So, what are we gonna do? Clean this up and put it back on. That's mad, that is. Chinese shit. I'm sending that back. Bloody hell! <sighs> wow! What a fight! This one goes up in here. I wanted to get this one done on camera because I'm going to do the other one um, and get it down and uh, change all the box and oil and change all our jazz and everything else. and. Uh, uh -huh. Can we get this in here? Yeah, we can. I could do with a break. Is that? Ooh. Their plate was nice and easy. So, that's a nice new arm in there. So, we're going to change these. Um, I'm toying with the idea of changing those for something I've already got because I couldn't get these. You can't buy, you can only buy the anti roll bar as a, a, an all in one piece so the easiest way oh, 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 nice nice we got of changing these like by far we can mess around to try and get the nuts and the bolts off and everything else honestly it's easier just to cut them off seriously it takes seconds in comparison um i'm gonna go and see though because i reckon if i can match that uh, this is where I sit here and go, did I throw those not broken bushes away or those not defective bushes away from the other project? Nearly said it, nearly said it. Now, I believe that these are 21 mil. Now, I'd be surprised if this bar... Uh, uh, 21 mil. Oh, near enough. Right, that's decided that then. That's the, uh, that's what we're doing. The way that this car has made it look as if everything is rot rotten. And even though we've had aluminium on, uh, steel bolts and all of that jazz it's been surprisingly compliant <sighs> see
baby shark do 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 baby never underestimate the power of duck oil there we go there we go there we go ah so Am I beginning to regret this? Yeah, damn right I am. The solution to all our problems. Where is it? Powder coat in. Full rebuild. Oh, I've got them to do as well. Uh. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Did I make a mistake giving a maid the night off? Oh, dear me. Oh, which ones have I got here? Are these them? Yes. Because I should be able to literally put these on like this oh it's practically brand new this look at it never know would it oh right where were we ruining my knees down here oh. okay oh there they used to go up come on oh there you go there you go there you go there you go And it's all dark over here, I can't see a thing. Can't see a thing. Can't see a thing. Yeah, they just look all wrong. But they won't go on any other way. And they are definitely not the wrong links. They can't go around any other way. Right the other way this bar can go on. Ah, uh, I've got it on the wrong side, have I? Did that make a difference? Is it on upside down? I decided to spare you the whole thing of me putting it back together. Um, I had it the wrong way around. <laughs> so, um, as you can see, everything's motion toyed. Um, and those bushes, they're good there. I'm more than happy with how that is spaced out one thing or another and all. Because we've got this lovely lift, um, then we haven't got to worry too much about it going up there. But we do need, you know, we have to go and get the, uh, the bowl of destiny. Am I drilling that out? Oh my hell! Come on. Oh! Aluminium! Oh, it's all aluminium! Bloody hell! Hang on. There we go. Okay. Oh! There you go. A little bit. You can feel it go. A little bit. I've just realised my oil uh, bucket is. Um, ignore that. That's not. That's not important. 
Um, my oil bucket is uh, ah, otherwise occupied. Uh, oh, I make the trip twice. Do I have a spare sun plug, you ask? Nope. But we do have. The next best thing. Because the copper wash that was on there is now in there somewhere. Usually, if this is a twat to get, we'll give you a good idea of how well it's been looked after. We're gonna have to. There we go. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. Yeah, I would go as far to say that we're not exactly, uh, you know, it's been a little while, I think. I've seen worse, but it's definitely been a little while. Now, normally, you take this out. That's a lot of oil in there. I wasn't expecting that. <sighs> yep, that's a lot of oil. I wasn't expecting that much in there. Because now it means that we've got, we've still got dirty oil in there that we don't want in there. Because I was a dickhead and I didn't do it the right way around. Okay, so. so. I can see a bit of condensation, but I can't see any sparkles. No. Don't get me wrong, it's filthy and it's old, but it's not full of nasty stuff. It's just old. I'll figure out, one day I'll figure out how to do this and not make a mess. <clears throat> this has a very precise torque setting. Um, I think it's 35 Newton meters. Click! It's like we were never there. I, I think that it would be a good idea to change this despite my misgivings about doing so because I think that these things are uh, a good indicator, another good indicator despite you, there you go despite the fact that what happens is that you stick that on there uh, these pipes and they're not my favourite, I tell you what. And I, I didn't know till I watched something the other day that's, that these little bung things, this is what they're for. Along with the special pliers that you've got for removing these. What indicator? Okay. I've got a Heens manual over there, could have looked in it. Well, 
quality with gas is as good as mine. Well, that is. Reduces the. Yeah. Um, normally I chuck a bottle of 40 in and I've done with it, but there's a deep code on it. Unfortunately, I don't have that luxury at the moment. So we're going to use that stuff which smells the same. So yeah, it's got to be the same, haven't it? You know? Go backwards a couple of turns, as much as it let us. And then we. Is it caught? Is it caught? Come on, go down. Mm. Oh, it doesn't feel right, this. <laughs> Oh, ah, ah. Rest that's got to go in the tank. Filters, done. This, I am going to... Oh, crap, I'm going to have to buy a new one. Um... Captain's log, start eight, 23, 24, 69, 69. Still unable to flush it away. All on aside, um, the new air filter didn't turn up, so I've given this a healthy dose of compressed air and beat it within an inch of its life. And I'm gonna forget about it because, yeah, the other one will turn up eventually. The uh, oil that I had here, wasn't the right kind. It never is. Um, despite me having quite a bit of it here. This should be PSA B7. That should be the one that is right for this. Low saps C2. I found very indifferent. And it's quite funny because it says look in the manual. It's not in the manual. And I keep you I the amount of times I've told people, oh look, just the best place to find out what oil is meant in your car for meant for your car. It's like in the manual, it's not in the manual. It just isn't. Oh. Ah, some quality dinosaur there. Quality dinosaur. Um Oh I do love the smell of fresh engine oil. I hate plastic dipsticks. I'm scared of breaking them all the time. Right, are we on the right? We're halfway up. Right now, when we run this, it should drop down a bit. Okay, if you say so. There it goes. <laughs> ah, I forgot about the sensor. No matter. That's a big shame. Because it looks like our bottom one there. There isn't really any way of getting that in and out. Now, is it broke? Yeah, it's gone. So how do you get that out of there? Because you'd have to take all of that off. And that bracket is that's the lower bearing. Nope. <sighs> wow! Right. Ooh. Ah, there we go. There she is. Uh. 
moment, but uh, mind you, the clock is rotten. Oh, it's rotten. Right, okay, so. Engine mountains, or at least two out of three, done. Gearbox oil, let it all settle, check for leaks. <laughs> right, now, as I understand it, the filler cap is down there, next to the earth. So, can we? Yeah, that's definitely the breather. Right, all right. It can't be that easy. Apparently it is. Come on, in the hole. In the hole. No, 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 come on. Now, what you should do is there's a plug on the back of the box and what that plug on the back of the box does is an overflow filler thing but roughly a litre came out so roughly a litre is going back in a little bit here or there isn't going to make any difference and i tell you we're going to be here a while now because the old litre is going in and i'm not going to worry about it Either and it is going in. I tell you what we're gonna do. Right to put you on the floor there. Right. Uh. This 
it's got to come out now I can see two ways of doing this the first way is to take everything up here and it's it, it's basically that thing is held in that bearing carrier there which means that you have to take the drive shaft out and all of that out now that might have been an idea back when we had all that apart however huh, yeah you've got to take all this apart so you have to take the shaft out and you have to take uh, and so on and so on you might be able to do it without taking the shaft but uh, yeah so that's one way the other way is to take this off take that bracket off there cut this out of there being very careful because steel aluminium etc etc and then somehow try to press the new one in i'm gonna go with the second one because yeah life's interesting and uh, you know i think that that's the way forward Uh, and we have done a little bit but I'm happy with that because that is where it uh, either bonded right and we got it out and that's, that was that was not nice so let's go and have a look at the other one going in bent again honest to god this should not be causing this amount of problem this should just be going in in it. Oh yeah. I reckon. One more. One more. Another one. And another. That's it. That's it. We bloody got it. Oh my god. Bloody hell. Well fair play. This car has fought. Dear Lord, is fought. I got nothing left. I am absolutely spent. Absolutely spent.
fright. Just to be sure about these oil leaks, I decided to do a full rebuild on it. Do all the seals in one go, do you know what I mean? Now, if it's good enough for Derek, it's good enough for me. And I reckon that this constitutes, like, you know, at least, right, a full seal, you know, it's they're noisy, they're noisy, they're noisy. And I, I, I know that Derek prefers to stick it in with the oil, but I didn't have our luxury. Ooh, oh, look at that, it's like treacle. So, let's have a look here. Uh, one litre to four litres. There. So we'll measure this out accurately now. Yeah. I just wanted to go through a bit of a recap of what we've done. Because I've realised it's actually been an epic struggle. <laughs> Right, we're going to start off in here. So we've done the service, we've done the filters. I have changed the air filter now. Uh, oil, fuel, um, engine mounts. We've done one, two, three, and the, the 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 epic one underneath, which can. So we've had on this side bushes. It's had the hub sorted. Uh, new wheel bearing, new ABS sensor. That one's had a bush. Oh, and the drop link on the other side as well. I forgot about the drop link. Rear. So it's had that spoon arm thing. New drop link. New bushes in the anti-roll bar. Same with the other side. I'm not walking all the way over there now. Yeah, this should be sorted. Uh, it needs a bloody good clean. It needs good, you know, and it probably needs a run as well after it's all, uh, it's all been done because this thing's got a really great big DPF thing on it. This is getting out of here now. I'm 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 bloody done with this. To be honest with you. Yeah. So, what have we got ourselves into here? Well, it's actually quite a nice car. Um, now we've fixed all the suspension issues um, and we've given it a service and we've given it a bit of love. It's performing well and it's driving well. It no longer wants to pull violently to the left. It no longer wants to skip violently to the right every time you go over a bump bigger than a cat's eye. Um, it means it's no longer going to do the time warp, but you know, can't have it all. Um, it's actually really pleasant to drive. It goes well, it's pretty good on fuel, and I'll be honest with you, it's really comfortable. It's really comfortable, to be honest. It's, it's, it's nice, it's quiet as well. The only thing I can really hear are those really, really, really expensive high performance tyres that are fitted to it. Now, in the grand scheme of things, the trade off that I made was time versus money. I put my time into this to save myself money. And that might sound like a good idea, but it's not necessarily for everyone. If you think that you're going to buy a car like this and you are going to pay somebody to um, fix it uh, and do the work that needs to be done on it, then I think you're going to be disappointed at how much it's actually going to cost you. And I, I can't say, because I, I've always been a case of I would prefer to repair something and fix it rather than, you know, move it on. Um, but it's, it's not something that everyone can do, and I, I get that. But at least now you might be able to look at that and say, actually, that's not a bad, you know. The used car game at this end of the scale has changed significantly since I last dipped in it. And I'm not saying this for the better either. It's actually not a very, uh, it was never a very nice place, but now, good Lord, I, the amount of, and I've said it before, there is no integrity in it whatsoever. People are generally terrible. You need to be nicer to each other because honestly, you, you, you've you got to pay some things forward sometimes, you know? But anyway, um, I, I'm, happy with what we've done and I'm happy with what we've got and I'm hoping that this will uh, take me through the next uh, the next few months at least oh, of course it will but um, it's it's you know as, as an ongoing concern if I was to sell this tomorrow I would have no I would lose no sleep over somebody getting in this and sticking their family in it um, it's 
it's more than uh, adequate and safe and all of those things. And that's the thing, you see. That's the thing you've got to think about. And that's how you need to think about things. You sell a car, you need to have a think. Somebody going to stick their kids in the back of it? Yeah? Somebody going to be, you know, going back and forth to work at four o'clock in the morning? Pay it forward. So how much did the lemon set me back? Well, the car itself cost me £1,100. The dino juice and all the filters, they came to a grand total of 65. The front suspension components, so the drop links and the bushes, they were 45. The rear suspension components, so the arms and the drop links were 80. Three engine mounts, 50 quid. The front wheel bearing, 22. ABS sensor, 18. And the consumables, including a set of windscreen wiper blades, God, they were expensive. £55. So the grand total comes to £1,435. Hold out your hand. So, there you go. That's the uh, culmination of quite a bit of work. And I, I'm not, you know, we've got a, 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 an half decent car here. Um, it's not a bad looking car either, you know, it's got a bit of presence, it could do with a bigger set of wheels, but that's not what this is about. This is about driving this safely and it not giving me any grief. Hopefully we've got there. I'm toying with the idea of putting another MOT on it, because it should pass, but I'm not sure if I got the time or on the hassle. Anyway, um, yeah, we're looking pretty good here and obviously now we've got uh, this. So it we are moving onwards and upwards and that means that we've got to clean all that out Get rid of everything all the scrap and all the bits and pieces and we've got to get on with the next project And I'm telling you now the next project is gonna be Oh, yeah, it's gonna be spot-on Isn't that right? Yeah. Let's have a crack It's alright, that huh?